gives us wings to dream, to imagine, and to lift our spirits. And never is this truer than when discussing South African artist Jean Doyle's wanton and witty bronze sculptures. Wrought in celebration of the fuller female figure, her voluptuously feminine sculptures are often playfully erotic. Invoking in the view of feelings of youth, optimism, and the lust for life. Jean majored in art with both painting and sculpture to her credit and first began making a name for herself as a painter. Her inspiring landscapes were soon much sought after and successfully exhibited for many years at the Natalie Knight Gallery in Johannesburg. And it was while relaxing at the hotel pool during one such exhibition that her artistic rebirthing took place. When I was a student, I was very um, impressed by Alberto Giacometti, who sculpted these long, tall, thin figures. And so my earliest work is of slender, thin figures. And of course I also used to paint and I was exhibiting my paintings in Johannesburg and the hotel at which I stayed had a swimming pool and one day this very large, interesting woman hove into sight with her hair piled up on her head, her killer heels and an arsenal of jewellery and wearing the very tiniest of bikinis. And she looked so glamorous and so confident and so bold and she didn't give a stuff about what anybody else thought. She looked like a 1950s movie star, um, maybe Dinah Dawes or Jane Mansfield. And I went straight back to my studio with my bag of clay and I started sculpting her. Her confidence and her elegance and her sophistication. And I felt I just had to capture her. And I've been circling her ever since. And capture her she did working in clay and then casting the finished piece in brilliant bronze. The result was a triumph. And this, her extravagant leading lady, has become Jean's sculpture signature. I started off painting, probably because my father was a painter and I used to spend a lot of time sitting under his easel watching him and making frames for him out of old fruit boxes and I'd always intend to grow up and be a painter. But then I found that I needed another dimension. I felt that what I had to say needed um, more weight. It needed to have mass and volume. And so I started working in clay. It was an easy progression from painting with a palette knife to sculpting in three dimension. And I found that Sculpting gave me tremendous satisfaction. I loved the feel of the clay. And I feel I can express myself so much better with working directly in a medium as one does with clay. Um, it is a forgiving medium. It's sympathetic. You can work in large, smooth areas or you can put in as much detail as you would like to. I always try and keep the detail to a minimum, um, although I'm very tempted to put detail all over it from top to bottom, but I'm very disciplined. I keep my, my surfaces large and smooth and just use detail in specific places. And as clay isn't a sort of medium that you can keep, I had to cast it into um, another medium. And bronze is probably the most suitable medium for sculptures. I find that once it's cast into bronze, one has a completely different attitude towards it. It is now becomes an unforgiving surface. It has to be worked on with tools and it becomes a, a solid, heavy object. It casts a shadow, it's real. So one has a slightly different attitude towards your um, sculpture once it's
cast into bronze. Jean's art is on display in public and private collections around the world and exhibited at such prestigious venues as the Salzburg World Fine Art Fair in Austria, the Florence Pignal in Italy, the Spa Shot in London's Covent Garden, and many other impressive galleries. She secured numerous commissions from the famous Just Nuisance sculpture in Simonstown and a pair of life-size miners for Diamond South Africa to Angola's national monument, Kifangondo, considered one of the largest artworks on the African continent. Weighing in at just under eight tons and standing nine meters high, it took Jean and her team of artisans almost a year to complete. Jean is a member of the South African Institute of Foundrymen, and it's her husband, Mike, mastermind of the Doyle Foundry, whom she says turns fantasy into fact, using fire and magic to bring out the silky seduction of polished bronze. The Doyle bronzes are a celebration of life, femininity and abundance, where the viewer is asked to look beyond mass to perceive a character and personality that is not influenced by the outward appearance of the body. Because, says Jean, contrary to what we're taught, the way you look doesn't change who you are. And she firmly believes that you don't have to be slim for your opinions to carry weight. Jean's art is ever-evolving, improving, succeeding, each piece hitting a higher note than the one before. And bronze has become her medium, chosen because she's found it the best way in which to express herself, to bring her concepts to life. Each bronze sculpture, from miniatures to life-size, is absolutely unique in both texture and contrast, formed from fleeting fantastical images that have been taking shape in her mind's eye for months, sometimes years. And the result, in a trademark bronze, is always evocative, thought-provoking, enduring. Jean Doyle's success is still a work in progress, from rich painted landscapes to huge three-dimensional tuskers, to delicate bronze miniatures, to the life-size Madonna of Musenberg. Because for Jean, art is a way of celebrating life, of examining fantasy on a realistic level. And she is locked in a never-ending search for perfection, flawless form, terrific texture, unique artistry. Today, her art inclines towards volume and mass. Tomorrow, who knows what artistic joys Jean has in store for us. But of one thing we can be sure, Jean promises us more, captivating, searching, evocative art to look forward to. And tomorrow's bronzes will take your breath away.